March 21st, 2016, Oxford Martin School, London. A path-breaking study here shows that by 2050, 8 million lives could be saved. Greenhouse gas emissions could be cut by two-thirds. Health and climate change budgets could be reduced by 1.5 trillion US dollars. This can happen if across the globe diets consist of lesser meats and more fruits and vegetables. Number one um, contributor to death is diets low in fruit and vegetables, diets high in red and processed meat. May 2nd, 2016, Milken Institute's Global Conference, Los Angeles. Eric Schmidt, executive chairman of Google's parent, Alphabet, lays out six game-changing technologies. One of these futuristic ideas is about a new diet for mankind. The fact of the matter is that if we could somehow use plants as part of the food and nutrition cycle, rather than meat, from vast databases of organic compounds, molecules and proteins, which we can now assemble. May 25th, 2016, United Nations Environment Assembly, Nairobi. 34 scientists from 30 countries of the United Nations International Research Panel have urged world leaders to make meat expensive for consumers by taxing it heavily. The Danish government is to consider a tax on red meat. This after a think tank concluded that the climate change is an ethical question. 20 June 2016, Beijing. China's new dietary guideline for its 1.3 billion population cut meat consumption by 50%. Beijing hopes that the campaign can improve public health as well as ease climate change since meat production accounts for more than 14% of global greenhouse emissions. 26 September 2016, London. A group of 40 investors have pointed out that the meat industry is becoming a high-risk business. From 2017, antibiotics will not be allowed to be used as a prophylactic on factory farms. That is an investment risk. This pressure group of investors with 1.25 trillion US dollars in assets has launched a campaign to encourage 16 global food companies to diversify from meat manufacturing to plant-based protein products to reduce their financial risks. The message has hit home. The meat industry has responded to this call in just two weeks. 10th of October 2016, New York. American meat giant Tyson Foods has invested in Beyond Meat, a company producing plant-based food that tastes like meat. Experts say that a majority of human diseases are related to inappropriate eating habits. The Global Burden of Disease study has found diets to be the number one cause of death and disability in many parts of the world. Modern civilization unfortunately faces a scourge of chronic illnesses. Strokes, heart attacks, kidney disorders, cancers, diabetes, Infertility, impotence, cirrhosis of liver, neurological complications, you name it. A majority of them happen due to improper food intake and poor lifestyle. Some topmost nutritional scientists of the world have collected mounds of irrefutable evidence to establish the role of bad diets in the spread of life-threatening disorders throughout the world. The China study by Dr. T. Colin Campbell Died for a New America by John Robbins. How Not to Die by Dr. Michael Greger. Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease by Dr. Caldwell B. Asselstein. Dr. Neil Bernard's Program for Reversing Diabetes. Dr. Ramesh Bichlani's Magnum Opus, Eating Wisely and Well. Along with thousands of studies in prestigious international institutions have shown that animal foods considerably damage human health whereas unrefined low-fat plant-based foods prevent and in some cases even reverse some of the prevalent acute disorders.
मैं तो कैंसर सर्जन हूँ तो पता है कि कितने कैंसर अंडा खाने से नॉन वेज खाने से या रेड मीट या तो बीफ मीट खाने से होता है तो प्रिवेंशन इज बेटर देन क्योर कहते हैं तो क्यों ना हम ये फाइबर वाले डाइट जो नेचुरल फूड है वेजिटेरियन वेजिटेरियन डाइट है वो क्यों ना खाए diet which is not made for our human body which is meat uh, eggs and other forms of animal proteins and what is truly the human diet is basically fresh plant based wholesome diet in the youngsters we see so many cases of people who've got diabetes or who even got heart disease in their late 20s or early 30s even so put together all these lifestyle illnesses uh, a significant number of them Uh, a percentage of them i would say between 60 to 80% there is an influence of diet on them why are people getting afflicted by chronic diseases on an unprecedented scale we witnessed today an avalanche of diabetes cancer and heart diseases this was never seen before in human history on this scale we've got to ask ourselves are we eating in sync with the biological design of the human body our uh, basic anatomy is more suited for plant based diet we have a much longer intestine whereas the carnivores have a very short intestine so when food remains in our intestine for longer period it tends to decay and a lot of toxins are built up our structure from right from the mouth to the our intestines is not made to digest meat and if you take meat is lying in the intestine for days together getting putrefied and causing the bowel cancer which is known <laughs> According to data released by the National Institute of Cancer Prevention and Research, apart from tobacco, alcohol and obesity, the biggest cancer risk factors come from diets poor in fiber, rich in red meat, salt and saturated fats. People who eat more of red and processed meats have higher chances of developing stomach and bowel cancers. Over half of all diet related cancers are caused by eating less than 5 servings of fruits and vegetables a day. Government of India figures show an estimated 25 lakh people living with cancers in the country. Every year, over 7 lakh new cancer patients get registered for treatment, and each year, over 5 and a half lakh of them die. The American Institute for Cancer Research states that an estimated 340,000 cancer cases per year could be prevented. The ways to prevent these are proper diet, physical activity and a consistently healthy weight. Modification of lifestyle and diets can play a key role in cancer prevention. The diet plays a huge role in genesis of cancer. And if one could be careful about the diet in terms of taking the less fat uh, healthy diet Uh, from early childhood plant based diet then the chance of cancer would be 40% lower dietary fiber comes only from plant based food according to experts one must eat plenty of fruits vegetables and whole grains this is what every medical journal keeps telling us again and again could it be put simpler than that i repeat have fruits vegetables have unprocessed whole grains because all of them have fiber and just by doing this simple task some of the most dangerous chronic diseases could be kept at bay we have dietary fiber only in plant foods and the dietary fiber not only prevents constipation but also has a role in preventing the sequelae of constipation like uh, piles and uh, varicose veins it also helps in preventing colonic cancer and dietary fiber also helps in bringing down cholesterol levels and sugar levels so it helps in the prevention of diabetes and heart disease people who depend basically on uh, on meat and poultry and other non veg products they are generally constipated constipation results into straining at the stool which results into bulging out of the veins which are around the anus and that is what form hemorrhoids or the so called piles abdominal pain bleeding through the rectum and irregular bowels are common enough problems but sometimes these could signal a more serious problem related to the gastrointestinal tract 
it may not just be piles. At this point, doctors might like to have a closer look at the digestive system. Processed meats rank right alongside cigarettes, according to the World Health Organization. The working group concluded that consumption of processed meat is carcinogenic to humans and this was based primarily on uh, strong evidence that uh, consumption of processed meat causes colorectal cancer. Uh, there was also an association observed with stomach cancer. A largely vegetarian India has historically witnessed much lower rates of intestinal cancers as compared to the Western world. Unfortunately, that is changing. Owing to radical changes in their dietary habits, Indians may be losing some of their advantages now. I, as a gastroenterologist, do see an increase in colonic cancer in our own country also. It has been well known that this kind of cancer was much commoner in the Western world than in the uh, Oriental uh, people. I think this is because of the change in our dietary habit. So when you take meat which has heme iron, and also this meat also contains a lot of chemicals, when this goes into the intestines, this further gets uh, uh, basically processed by the bacteria and there is a release of nitrosamines. All these compounds are known to be carcinogenic. A wide spectrum of prestigious medical bodies and prominent institutions the world over have arrived at a large consensus. They say in one voice that red and processed meats significantly increase the risk of colorectal cancers in human beings. Nine independent research teams identified five lakh studies on the subject of diets and cancers. An expert panel of 21 very senior scientists reviewed the findings and made judgments based on the evidence. They found that red meat, including beef, pork and lamb, as well as processed meats significantly increased the risk of colorectal cancer, which is an intestinal cancer. The panel recommended that one should eat plenty of vegetables, fruits and whole grains and limit the amounts of red and processed meats. A detailed medical study conducted here concluded that higher consumption of meat and fat from animal sources can increase the risk of colorectal cancer. On the other hand, high consumption of fruits and vegetables with high fiber content can play a protective role against the risk of colorectal cancer in Saudi society. A comprehensive statistical health study conducted here concluded that red meat intake is strongly associated with increased risks of prostate cancer among Pakistani men. A team of eminent doctors after analyzing broad-based data concluded that frequent consumption of red meat and fat items may increase prostate cancer. Their study found that more intake of fruits, vegetables and fluids may protect against prostate cancer in Pakistan. Evidence collected by top medical scientists of the university convincingly established that red meat and processed meat increased colorectal cancer risk. A study using scientific methods has proved that consumption of some types of meat and processed meat may be associated with the risk of developing colorectal cancer. After a Herculean effort that lasted for many decades, anti-smoking activists finally reached a milestone. They forced governments to put warnings on cigarette packets saying, smoking kills. A similar campaign is gathering momentum against the consumption of animal-based food. Encouragingly, some experts now say that meat is the new tobacco. Not just eating meat, but even smelling it is no longer safe. That's right! Inhaling meat fumes coming from barbecuing meat or while frying meat can prove to be extremely harmful to human health. Surprisingly, 
meat fumes contain the same dangerous compounds which are found in tobacco smoke. These are called polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons and heterocyclic amines. Meat eaters can be hazardous neighbors too. A group of scientists conducted a study here to show that just living next door to eating joints engaged in frying and barbecuing meats may pose a hazard. They measured the cancer risk in people living in the vicinity of such eateries. They found that the highest risk of cancer came from Chinese restaurants followed by western and barbecue kitchens. Red meat is not meant for humans. If you process it, by either curing it, salting it, or even heating it at high temperatures. Not only it's going to harm the person who is taking it, because it's going to cause far higher chance of uh, cancer because there is formation of those polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, the heterocyclic uh, amines, but also the people who are making that meat and are inhaling those fumes uh, at, at a constant interval, even their risk of cancer and other lifestyle illnesses goes up. A new study by Harvard researchers found eating processed meats leads to poorer sperm quality. They asked 156 men about their eating habits. Those who ate more processed meat appeared to have a lower percent of well-shaped sperm. So it's been seen that uh, the, not only are the sperms abnormal and not only are they uh, uh, morphologically abnormal, the count is lower. In addition to that, they have lower fertilizing ability. Toxics thrive on meat. Meat is the biggest dietary source of pesticides and chemicals because meat cannot be washed like fruits and vegetables. Studies show that a mother can pass these harmful substances to her fetus through intake of meat. The animals are grazing on grounds and especially having water which is also leached with a lot of insecticides and pesticides which have like DDT, DDE, these are known as endocrine disrupting chemicals or persistent organic pollutants. Their levels build up in the animal's protein. So when you actually consume this, it's been found that they can alter your hormonal milieu. And the, it's very important that especially when pregnant mothers have it, it affects the, uh, the developing uh, in utero, the offspring that is developing. More meat means less sperms too. Researchers have analyzed semen samples from 387 men born between 1949 and 1983. Data on their mother's diet during pregnancy was compiled too. It was found that pregnant women who ate beef seven or more times a week may be producing sons with 24.3% lower sperm counts. Data suggests that maternal beef consumption and foreign substances in beef may alter a man's testicular development in the womb itself. This would in future adversely affect this reproductive capacity. While this has been suggested in some uh, st recent studies that uh, if mothers take a lot of uh, uh, red meat uh, and processed meat and l do not take adequate amount of vitamins and minerals, then yes, there is a chance that the, some of their uh, uh, the babies born compared to a vegetarian mother would have more chance of having some congenital abnormality which includes some degree of uh, lower sperm count and maybe infertility long term. So it's been seen that mothers who have higher levels of these insecticides and pesticides built to in, in their uh, blood and especially when they're having a lot of non-veg food and that could actually affect the in utero development of the fetus it actually really affects the uh, genitourinary system and so there are a large number of defects which affect the gonads. So children are born with ambiguous genitalia like undescended testes, like they have cryptorchidism or hypospadias. It affects the testicular development and later on these children can go on to develop testicular cancer. It's also been seen that there are disorders of the thyroid which could also affect growth of the brain. So it's been seen that children who are exposed to such higher levels of in, in utero, so they have dis uh, disorders of attention, behavior, sensory def deficits. According to the Union Finance Ministry's Economic Survey Report of 2015-16, 
egg production in India has reached 7,900 crore eggs per year. Additionally, poultry meat production stood at 30 lakh tons in the same period. Aggressive advertising by the National Egg Coordination Committee has succeeded in inserting eggs into the Indian diet in a big way. The National Egg Coordination Committee is not a government body, as its name might suggest. It is a poultry traders association, which goes out of the way to entice people to eat as many as 10 eggs at a time in the name of good health. Dr. David Spence, Director of Stroke Prevention and Atherosclerosis Research Center, Roberts Research Institute, Canada, spoke to us on the huge amount of cholesterol contained in a single egg. One large egg yolk has 213 milligrams of cholesterol, which is nearly as much as a 12-ounce monster burger. From there's a, there's a company in the States called Hardee's that markets 12-ounce burgers with bacon and cheese. Um, and until December, the web, their website said that that 12-ounce burger had less cholesterol than one egg yolk. All plant-based whole food products have plenty of dietary fiber, but they have zero cholesterol. Not so with animal products. Eggs and meat contain high amounts of dietary cholesterol and saturated fats. They have zero dietary fiber. This proves to be a deadly cocktail for the arteries. Therefore, stopping consumption of eggs after a stroke or a heart attack is like quitting smoking after a diagnosis of lung cancer. The damage due to dietary cholesterol found in eggs is often assessed with the overnight fasting cholesterol levels of the patient. This is erroneous because overnight fasting cholesterol levels do not give the full picture of the damage done to the arteries throughout the day. Dr. Spence explains. Fasting cholesterol tells us what was affecting the artery lining the last few hours of, of the night. Then you get up in the morning and have breakfast, then you have lunch, then you have dinner. So for 16 hours of the day, what's affecting the artery lining is the fats from the meals on top of that baseline. And for four hours after a high cholesterol, high fat meal, the arteries are inflamed. There's endothelial dysfunction, so the artery lining is twitchy. And there's, and there's increased oxidative stress with nearly a 40% increase in oxidized LDL, which is the most harmful form of cholesterol. So dietary cholesterol is not okay. In India, even traditionally vegetarian families seem to be vulnerable to the propaganda of the egg lobby. Surprisingly, many doctors strongly advise mothers to feed eggs to their children. So we belong to a very, very, uh, you know, a very strict vegetarian family where personally I, I myself, I, you know, if I have the choice, I can have non-veg, but I have never liked non-veg and hence I've never uh, introduced it to my children. But uh, when I took my kids to the pediatric and uh, the first thing that she told me is they are lacking in proteins and it's very important to substitute their vegetarian diet along with uh, eggs. People say, oh, well, eggs are good for children. I think it's not a good idea to give children the idea that eggs are tasty and enjoyable. They shouldn't be thinking of them as food for humans. According to Indian Council of Medical Research data, 100 grams of kale chane has 24 grams protein, while 100 grams of eggs contain just 13.7 grams protein. But ceaseless propaganda by the egg lobby in India is working. We're seeing eggs in the breakfast tables of a huge majority of Indian vegetarians who have been led to believe that it is necessary to consume animal-based proteins for better health. But many stalwarts from the medical field believe that a plant-based diet could easily take care of the nutritional requirements of growing children too. These children who get exposed to animal protein very early in life, like you know 15 days, 20 days of after birth, they uh, tend to have these uh, small amino acids go into the system and these children have more often allergic asthmas and other things. It has been shown by the China study that animal protein is one of the most toxic substances in the human diet. According to the prestigious medical body Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine, adding a highly concentrated protein source such as egg whites has the potential to increase risk for kidney disease, kidney stones and some types of cancer. Plant proteins on the other hand are more suitable and in proper combinations they can provide all the components of a good protein. Even for children, it's not really essential to have egg or any other non-vegetarian source of protein. Uh, even a child can manage with a mixture of cereals and pulses. There is adequate 
protein and adequate nutritional uh, stuff in the vegetarian diet. In addition, it is also rich in vitamins and antioxidants, which further protect your body from diseases. Many people think that uh, taking vegetarian food will make you weak, but I can tell you examples of hundreds of athletes who are vegetarian and who have broken the uh, world records like Martina Navratilova and so on. Similarly, the strongest animals on this planet are vegetarian. You see a horse, horsepower. Similarly, you see hippopotamus, rhinoceros, they are mostly vegetarian. There are so many plant-based foods which are very high in protein. For example, a simple things like rajma, kale chane, uh, soya bean, they are loaded with protein. They are very rich in protein and these are easily assimilable as compared to animal protein. So for example, legumes, uh, pulses and whole grains can actually meet our demand for protein and would be adequate. For example, I've uh, even read that there are certain people who just before performing marathon, uh, going on marathon races, they shift to a plant-based diet three to four months prior to that. A common fallacy is that a meat-based diet is a necessity for superior athletic performance. Many of the world's top-class sports person have substantially improved their performance by taking to a plant-based diet. I changed my diet at 30 years old and I had all of my personal bests after 30 years old with a new vegan and vegetarian diet. Some of these players spur their aging bodies into greater buoyancy by stopping the consumption of animal-based products. My moving toward a more plant-based diet was a major reason that I was able to continue playing professional tennis through my 40s. It made me mentally sharper and made it possible for me to endure the physical conditioning that is required to compete at that level. Vegetarian में कुछ भी मिल जाए दूध है दही है मक्खन है बादाम है कुंडी में हम पहलवान मोस्टली पहलवान बादाम पीते हैं According to studies the adverse effects of eggs on the heart are quite similar to the corresponding damage caused by cigarette smoking Additionally if an egg eater smokes too the damage to the inner lining of the blood vessels adds up with each other increasing the risk of the patient getting cardiovascular diseases substantially Egg yolks are not okay in, in our, our study in uh, 2013, I guess it was, we showed that egg consumption increased carotid artery plaque about 60% as much as smoking, and smoking and egg consumption were additive. So a young man might say, well, I'm only 20, I'm not going to have my heart attack until 65, so I can smoke and, and eat eggs for 45 years and then I'm okay, but that's, that's not true. He's making his arteries worse all that time and bringing on his heart attack earlier. So it's a lifetime issue. November 18, 2009, Hippel Cancer Research Center, Dayton, Ohio. Egg consumption data from 1964 to 1994 of 34 countries was derived from World Health Organization and Food and Agriculture Organization. This data of egg intake was analyzed for its correlation with colon and rectal cancers. This study found that eating eggs was associated with an increased risk of colon and rectal cancers at the population level. Researchers studied 27,607 men who were part of the health professionals follow-up study from 1994 to 2008. It was found that by consuming 2.5 eggs per week, men increased their risk for a deadly form of prostate cancer by 81%, compared with men who consumed less than half an egg per week. Fourteen studies involving 320,778 subjects sought to establish the relationship between egg consumption and the risk of contracting cardiovascular diseases and diabetes. It was found that those who consumed the most eggs had a 19% increased risk for developing cardiovascular diseases and 68% higher risk for contracting diabetes as compared with those who ate the fewest eggs. Eggs, the artery killer, 
scientists investigated the relationship between intestinal microbes and dietary phosphatidylcholine found in eggs and the resultant damage to the arteries. The egg yolk also has 250 milligrams of phosphatidylcholine, which is converted by the intestinal bacteria into something harmful for the arteries, especially in people with renal failure. It's called trimethylamine. Trimethylamine is oxidized in the liver to trimethylamine oxide, TMAO. TMAO causes atherosclerosis in animal models, and in the, in the Cleveland Clinic, uh, 4,000 patients referred for coronary angiograms. They were given two hard-boiled eggs as a test dose and then had measurement of the TMAO levels. The patients in the top quartile of TMAO had two and a half times the risk of coronary disease.